My name is Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns and I'm, today I'm going to be showing you how to um, spin a gradient braid. So I got this from Irish Fibre Tales and it is a hand it, it is a hand dyed gradient dyed um, piece of roving and my aim is to make a gradient skein of yarn. Um, to do this I'm just going to do a really simple two ply. Um, you could also do a three ply, you could do a, um, a chain ply but if you wanted to get a traditional two ply which is what I enjoy making um, this is how you do it. So let's get started. So it comes often in a crochet chain and you just undo part of it. Oh, this looks like it's so there's a little extra bit there. <laughs> so if it's not coming apart easily on one side, you just switch over to the other side and it should come out easily there. Yes, there it is. So we're one side or the other. There you go. So this is all your fibre in a big bunch. This little bit here, I'm actually going to split this in half as well. I'm going to start off with that bit on both sides it has been dyed like this. So there we go. Uh, for the rest of it now what we want to do is just split it right down the middle. So as you can see it is folding, it is pulling apart in a kind of a half, it's folded in on itself. If you can see that it's kind of folded in. So I just want to split it in half roughly. Now you could be really exact and get a weighing scales, but honestly, you know, it's fine. It's hand spun. It's not meant to be perfect. So just split it right down the middle. And it comes apart very, very easily. That is your preparation. Now, what you could do as well is you could pre-draft this fibre if you're spinning it on a drop spindle or if you're spinning it. And so it's a little bit felted here in some parts because the dyeing technique that was used and then it was made into a, um, a, uh, a braid. So you can pre-draft it by pulling it apart, pulling it apart like this a little bit, just to fluff it out. And you can spin it, spin from it like that. So the next part of my video is just going to be this spinning this um, with my default spinning which is kind of a mixture between a short forward draft and a short backward draft and um, yeah so I generally spin my singles to a lace weight um, not on purpose it's just what I've ended up being able to spin as I um, progress in my spinning and then the two ply then will actually create like somewhere between a DK and a sport weight uh, more more like a sport weight or a thick fingering um, depending on how much I get out of it so the last braid that I did this with let me just get it This is the last braid that I did this with and sort of similar colours that I'm going to be using them together and as you can see the blues spun with the blues, the yellows spun with the yellows and the browns spun with the browns. There's a little bit of overlap where there's a little bit of the yellow and the white which kind of spun together, creating that little marl effect. But I think that's going to be, that does make a difference. I mean, that's what hand spinning is. You're not going to get all your colors exactly in the same place. If you did want to not mix any of the colors at all, uh, chain plying, you would probably still get a bit though. You know, you would get a little bit of marling. You're never going to avoid marling with hand spun. It's part of the beauty of it. So just embrace it. Um, I really love gradient spinning so that's why I'm going ahead with this and I'm hoping to make, make a gradient sweater quite like this one whereas I'm going to start with the blues on all three of mine so this is my other braid 
this one and this one. I'm going to start on the blues to my face and then I'm going to start all three using my jogless join technique and knit a possibly a cardigan this time all the way down with the three braids at one time. So that hopefully it will go from a blue and then into a brown, light brown stripe and then into a purple, this purple shade. And then this will be my final, my final um, bottom half of the section. So, yay. Not sure what I'm going to do with sleeves. Hopefully work that out um, uh, when I'm working on it. I might actually need to actually just do the sleeves with this color, which should be fine too. Um, but I probably will do another raglan chocolate join. Um, kind of it works best, jogless join works best when you're actually doing a top down sweater um, just because of the way that it works. So yeah, that's my plan. Yay, exciting.
you can see here, the uptake is actually like it's not pulling the fiber on very hard. It's actually not. So if I leave it and don't actually push, like I pull it physically myself, it's not going to move. It's just going to keep adding twist um, because I'm holding it here in this other hand. <clears throat> so the uptake isn't very high. My tension is not very high. And that's to allow enough twist into the single so that when I ply it back with a very high twist, um, opposite uh, twist, um, that, the, that I don't basically end up with uh, underspun uh, singles. So that's my plan for this yarn is to have it very high twist. But in order to have it high twist, what I need to do is kind of almost over twist your single and then have a really high twist ply um, so that when you're untwisting in the opposite direction and spinning them together, that the the plies individually, the the plies individually won't uh, come apart really, um, especially under such a high twist. Well, that's my theory anyway. So, <laughs> and I accidentally went backwards there. So let's just pull it forwards again. So it's not like it's it's not completely overspun. Like, you know that that's a that's a like a reasonable little pigtail. That's fine. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's outrageously overspun it's just adding a little bit extra twist to what I normally would I think my main problem of my default draft is that my I'm impatient so when I am spinning I I want the yarn to go on fast I want it to be done fast but if I need to you know in order to add in enough twist, I actually need to go slowly. So whereas normally I would have quite a high tension to move things on fast, to speed things up and get things pulling on. That means that I would have, because it's moving so fast, I don't have enough time to put in enough twist. So I'm intentionally trying to change that on this project, which is my project for a cardigan for the spin and make along. So slowly slowly wins the race <laughs> for a long lasting garment. The reason I want high twist is um, to make a garment that's going to be longer lasting. So you have to spend the time, you know, you have to spend the time doing it for a project that you want to last a bit longer. Um, I think any other theories about how I could spin higher twist, please let me know. Um, do please pop the link down below. I don't know how, when this vlog was going to come out. It's going to take me ages. To, <laughs> ages to spin it all. But you know what? It'll get done. It's like uh, one of my colleagues, or one of my one of the women on Instagram was saying, you know, she bought 600 grams of John Arbin and she was going to do it all on a spindle. And she was like, where do I start? And I was like, at the beginning. You started like you're going to, like how you eat an elephant with the first bite. Except I don't eat animals. <laughs> You just break it down and you just start somewhere and it'll all get done as long as you're consistent. Just keep going.
So I've just completed this um, gradient skein and um, it's turned out there's a, a lot more black in this than I anticipated. It's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. So this is my final skein. I haven't actually measured it. I'm going to use the technique of measuring that Mina suggested, which is basically lay it out on the table and um, measure around in a circle and then count how many I have. And it looks like it's slightly thinner than this, but I do find that um, it's a little bit misleading. You have to count, you have to actually count your yards. You really just don't know 
how much you've got until you count to the end. So if I hold it like this, honestly, it just looks like a black skein of yarn. And there are maybe 30 or 40 strands of blue. And then there's about approximately the same of the brown, the light brown, and then a little bit more of the dark caramely or dark chocolatey brown. So it's caramel and then a chocolate and then black, purpley black, which is actually lovely. Um, yeah, so this is going to be possibly the second colour of my sweater moving down. Well, I say second colour. I am hopefully going to be working on um, three colours together. I've been thinking a lot about my idea for the smell and I'm thinking if I'm going to be doing a jogless join gradient all the way down, starting with the blue and then moving into the lighter brown, moving into kind of brownie colours and then down into deep dark purpley colours. Um, this is the next one that I'm spinning up. So something like this with added lighter blues scattered through. Um, it's going to, I do need more cardigans in my, in my work, in my wardrobe, um, nice, nice cardigans that um, will be suitable to throw over a few dresses or um, just to pull an outfit together. I've got one or two, but they're not really, I've got one lace weight one, which is really light and floaty, but it doesn't sit right. It's a little bit, um, yeah, so, but if I want to do the jogless join technique, I'm going to have to knit it in the round and then steak it up the front, um, which I'm totally okay with, I think. <laughs> Um, I need to look for a nice, a nice design, uh, which is kind of a, in a sport weight, I think. Um, this is what this came out to be, and it's generally what everything works out to be. So uh, a sport weight or um, a DK actually would do okay as well. Um, if I just go up a needle size, but I think I want this because it's such a high twist yarn. I do want this to be a, a kind of a more structured garment. So I'd actually prefer to go down needle sizes rather than go up just for strength. So maybe a, a sport or a heavy fingering weight garment. So I'm going to be doing some, a little bit more research. I'll know my final yardage when I've spun everything up, all four of these up and we'll see from there how I go. So there we go, that's how I spin a gradient a gradient yarn. Um, it's very simple, split the yarn in half, spin end to end and keep your colors together when you're plying them, very easy. But um, it's kind of the reason I started, it's, not one of, it's one of the reasons I got into kind of spinning colored -y baths. I was just obsessed with kind of managing my own gradients. Um, you can do, I could do a three ply, but I did want to have a lighter, a lighter weight yarn. So that's why I chose a two ply. So I hope you enjoyed that video and um, I'll see you later.